you very much for attending. It's been um, it's it's been a while since um, we've uh, had a, a broadcast or a webcast uh, specifically talking about um, the acquisition and how things are going. And so we decided it's been it's been about six months, and so we decided that this would be a good time to come together and um, go back, just touch a little bit on uh, how things happened and uh, and and where we are. Uh, and more importantly, where we're heading. So um, I hope you find this very useful. This we I, I think we have a good number of our customers already. Some of you uh, I've talked to recently uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Some of you have not. So welcome. Uh, and then obviously we have uh, many others from the industry, um, uh, our competition, whoever else that is on here to learn more about how things are going. Welcome to everybody um, on this. On this, and please keep asking questions. The, this is um, we are very, as all of you know, we are very passionate uh, about our point of view on APIs and how it's changing the world, at least of technology. Um, so we can talk about it for a long time, uh, but this is this is your time and uh, for you to get a perspective on how things are going, as well as ask any questions that you might have. We put some slides together to give you a perspective on what's happened. Um, just a little bit of history. We started the acquisition process in May of last year, I think about, about this time. Uh, Moen Sandy helped us with it. We signed a definitive agreement with Google. We had many other folks that were interested. A lot of that's already been uh, with our SEC documents. You can go and take a look at it. As a public company, we had to track all of it. We signed the agreement, the definitive agreements. We actually signed the intent to be acquired with Google on September 7th. And then the acquisition actually happened, the shareholder uh, the shareholder vote actually happened on November 10th, and that's when we consummated um, Apogee becoming a fully owned uh, subsidiary of Google. Um, and so it's been, since November 10th is a date that we started, it has been uh, phenomenal. I have an opportunity to, and so do, so do my colleagues, we, we have an opportunity to actually do a lot with Apogee, uh, continue what we're doing, and do more with Google, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But let me start by talking about, you know, Google has, you know, Let's be clear, Google is the API company, right? If I can go back in history, there are two companies that actually put APIs on the map very early. At least API is the way defined in the modern world, right? Which is based on consumption, uh, not just saying that you have a bunch of services that are gonna show up. And, and I'm talking about rest and soap. I'm, I'm mostly talking about how do you curate an experience for a developer to consume specific uh, technology. Uh, and the two companies were Google Maps. We you know Google with its Maps API was phenomenal. Uh, and the second one was Twitter. A lot of people don't remember this. We get stuck in, you know, who's using what and what words they're using. Um, but uh, Twitter used to be an API company. You could only use Twitter uh, as, uh, as an API a long time ago. So when Google, when Google had the opportunity to take a look at Apogee and there were, there were some uh, folks who were very interested uh, in, in looking at us. Um, they, we did a lot of due diligence together and uh, their perspective was they wanted to acquire Apogee because of our product. Um, you know, a lot of customers using it, things like that. The people, we continue, uh, continue to believe and obviously a bias point of view that we have, the, we have some of the uh, best folks in the API world at Apogee and that's what propels our thought leadership every day. And the third thing is our go-to-market. Our go-to-market is fairly unique, right? We are a technology company and we, we take pride in shipping a great product that changes your businesses. But at the same time, we also spend a lot of time talking to our customers about strategy. We talk to them about people and process because we learned a long time ago. If you're going to go through the digital transformation, it's not just going to be about technology, it's going to be about people and process, so we take best practices and share them with you um, as the chief digital officer, the CIO, the CTO, and now even with CEO. So Google found those three to be very, very attractive, and, uh, and that's what got them super interested in, in working very closely with us. On the flip side, rarely, very rarely, for those of you that have gone through this, does shareholder interests, customer interests, and people interests, or employee interests, all come together and align with one thing. And I think it is aligned really well with the Google acquisition. We loved Google from day one, and we had a short list of companies that we wanted to work with, was because of three reasons. One, I already talked about Google defined the API space. I mean, you, know, you can go through 
any of the great, I mean, there's about 100 plus APIs that they provide externally and they started the trend in a massive way. Very impressive technologists, right? They've solved some of the uh, biggest problems in the world, right? And, and deep, deep, deep thinkers about it. Very similar on a smaller scale uh, to, to Apogee. You know, in the Google context, there's a tremendous focus on users. Just like we've had a tremendous focus on customers, and we love that, right? Because at the end of the day, the guiding principle for Apogee is it's about the customer. And I think that's very similar to the way Google thinks about it. It's about the user. Think about the user before you think about anybody else and make the experience really phenomenal for them. It's been, you know, between why Google acquired Apogee and why we thought Apogee would be a good fit with Google, it, it's six months later. Uh, we're part of the Google Cloud team uh, and it is actually working really well. I work for Diane Green who runs Google Cloud, and uh, we are picking up a lot of momentum, not only as Google Cloud, but as Apogee as well. So let me spend a few minutes talking about it. Before we get to uh, talking about what Apogee's products have done and the traction we're getting over the last six months, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes. We do this internally. We've also done this externally for those of you that have tracked us in the past. In the beginning of our fiscal year, we always start with, you know, what are the big trends and are we capitalizing on it? Are we thinking about our business anew? thinking about maintaining everything we have, but can we morph it, tweak it, make it 10% here, 20% there, or maybe even refresh it in a massive way. And so our fiscal year with Google actually ended in December, and in January and February, we came up with some trends that we see in the industry. Um, so let me just go through them really quickly. Um, the first one is you know, ML and AI. I, I've not, um, and I land up talking to customers, at least three, four, five of them a week, there's not a single customer interaction I have where there's not a consideration or discussion about machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, it's still early days, but I think there are enough discussions happening. And some customers, some insurance companies, people who are very much in the data business are actually taking a much deeper look at it now, getting very sophisticated on how to make it happen. Um, we obviously, as being part of Google, and Google uh, essentially pioneering the space, if you may, I mean, Google has been doing AI. Um, it took the bet on AI and ML long before anybody else did. And we've used it not only as, you know, not only doing things like TensorFlow and, and TPUs, but also using it for our own infrastructure and bringing, up, bringing it to Android and other things. So taking all those best practices and making it available is, uh, is becoming really important. And we at Apogee are going to think about ML, into, ML and AI in two parts. One is how do we make every feature we have better, and I'll talk about that, um, and make it so that it takes advantage of machine learning. In addition to that, what are specific things that we can add in the API world where we can actually take advantage of you know, mixing and matching your data with other data that's available from Google or from third parties, um, as well as you know, have some pre-created models for specific industries. Security is another, uh, is, is another discussion that I'll end up having a lot, which is, uh, it is on top of mind, and I think security, by the way, will be on top of mind for all of us, right, in a, in, a, in a very big way. And I think I'll talk about security in the hybrid world because I think there's a lot of discussion about that, but, but not a lot being done. Multi-cloud, I think by default, I've not met a single customer, um, by default, I've not met a single customer that is not in the multi-cloud world already, right? Almost all of them, unless you're a startup, Right, that's, uh, and, and, and many of those companies are our customers, they're digital native and they have no system of record and they just have one system, there's no difference between system of engagement and system of record. All of them have a system of record that runs in a data center and they want to create a system of engagement in the cloud or they might want to do it in a private cloud. So by default, all customers are in multi-cloud and the discussion that I end up having with customers is how do you uh, pick the cloud for what, right? Because all clouds are going to be optimized. There's going to be a minimum viable compute storage and everybody will have a different approach. But what is one cloud better than the other one for? And I think that is going to manifest itself over time. And, and more importantly, how do you take a multi-cloud strategy? And this is not that different for, for those of you, and I'm going to show my age here, for those of you that have been around the block, um, of making those decisions when you had to pick between operating systems in the mid-90s or pick between systems in the mid-90s during the client-server days, 
where you had to talk about, yeah, I'm going to have HP, but I'll have Sun also, and I'll have IBM. And how do you do? How do you do things like system management around it and things like that? So I think multi-cloud is happening. I think you will land up using multiple public clouds because they'll be optimized for different things. Then you'll start talking about how I have technology that cuts across all of them. So. Something that we're working on, stay tuned. We'll come back and talk to you a little bit more about that. Microservices, and the reason I put a question mark there is because I think microservices are awesome. People use it uh, in different ways. I see a lot of FUD around microservices as well. And it reminds me a little bit, and, and, I'm, and I'm going to send shivers down people's uh, backs, but it reminds me a little bit of core principles are really good. Let's go off and make it happen, but it's getting bastardized like like you know, like web services were uh, earlier in, in, the, in the early 2000s. And I think microservices are things that, you know, great developers have been doing for quite some, quite some time. Uh, by the way, I put serverless in, in some of that uh, as well. But I think over a period of time, as they go through the hype cycle, I think what we'll find is things will cl get clarified a little bit. Hybrid is another one that a lot of people talk about. I don't think a lot of people are doing, unlike microservices, which I think people are doing. Hybrid has two big issues that we need to solve. One is security. It has to be um, very secure. And the second thing is there's a latency problem that needs to be solved. And so I think it's a hairy problem. We are starting to solve it with our customers. I think much like multi-cloud, much like microservices, I think almost everything will be hybrid. Uh, even within the multi-cloud world, there will be a hybrid uh, perspective, which is put uh, from an API perspective, put a gateway close to where, the, where your servers are or where the API is, but do the rest uh, you know, in, a, in a different world. And so thinking through that and making it work is going to be a hard problem. And I think a lot of people are focused on it, but I don't believe a lot of people have solved it. And so you should, um, something that we will definitely take, uh, Apogee has been working on, but I think with, with some of the great technologies and the great network that Google has, we're gonna come back and talk to you more about that in the near future. The other thing I would tell you is two-speed IT and bimodal, what, what Gartner calls bimodal IT, what we've called two-speed IT, is definitely taken off. I remember my discussions in 2015 and 2016 with customers. We had to talk to them about why you need two different modes. Why do you need two different speeds? And we've been having this discussion since 2012. Um, and now you don't have to have that discussion. People actually understand they need a layer. Um, they know it's not a traditional middleware stack. They know it actually has to have all these different components to it. And Forrester has a own perspective on it, so does Gartner, but it's really interesting. And the last thing I would tell you is, you know, it started, it started in 2015, you know, in, in October with reInvent. But I definitely feel like until then, IT was trying to catch up with cloud. And after that, they have, you know, they have turned the corner and they seem to be at least at pace with the business and not behind and not reacting to make it happen. So some great things happening from a market books. It's super exciting if you're a technologist. Um, we all obviously would like to have this move faster and it seems like it's picking up momentum uh, that the gap between digital natives and uh, digital immigrants is actually um, getting smaller, but we would all agree that you know, companies like Google and Apogee and others can do a better job of actually helping our customers, you know, make that gap smaller as we go forward. So super excited about the technology stuff. So I, I cannot start talking about what we've already done by first thanking all our customers who have uh, stuck with us, uh, who have helped us build a great company, um, build a great product. We really appreciate all your support um, and we are here to serve you. We will never ever forget that. Uh, and we'll do everything that we can to make sure that you are successful. It's been six months. We've, um, we've had delivered two quarters, our December quarter as well as our March quarter. We've actually exceeded our numbers on both quarters. So the business itself is growing really well, which is generally unheard of when you have an acquisition. We've added 100 new customers. Uh, the, the pace has actually increased, which is, which is phenomenal. We have done many more expansions. That means our customers are becoming successful faster. So everything that we're helping them with from a launching their projects, from a strategy perspective, how to think about teams, how to think about processes, uh, as well as most importantly, everything we're doing from a product point of view is helping our, our customers go faster through, the, through their customer journey. We've obviously done some great events. We continue to do Adapt or Die, made a second movie by the way. Um, 35 events, we've, done, we've got 3,500 attendees. 
and uh, and over a thousand customers uh, attending. So great progress all the way through uh, on on what we would call from customer traction or market traction. The number of users that have been added to Apogee, the platform, is it's increased 75%. So this represents new trial users, people who come and use our product, um, who have not paid us yet, but they are using our product for projects, and these comes they, they come from Global 2000 companies, um, as well as they come from um, from from startups or somebody just doing personal projects. But the second part is how customers are expanding, right? It used to be a team of seven, and now there's a team of 40. And so we love, we actually track users in a massive way, and we really love to see more people from the same company, more people from the same team come in and use a product on a regular basis. The number of APIs has dramatically increased as well. I mean, for close to 40% growth, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, Close to 36%, you know, growth uh, from a from an APIs per day process, and we well over a billion dollars making it happen. And then the last one is is something that we also track. So it's users, it's APIs, API calls, uh, as well as active apps, right? Because at the end of the day, you're using the system of engagement to deliver an experience to a customer, and that manifests itself in an app. So actually having 67% you know, increase in the number of active apps is absolutely phenomenal, right? And so thank you very much for continuing to use the product and please continue to give us a bunch of feedback on what we can do better. We've had 50 plus releases and updates, all this in the last six months, by the way, this is from November 10th onwards, um, across cloud, no OPDK. OPDK is our on-premise product. We obviously do many more releases on cloud than we do on-premises, uh, but we've not slowed down from what we've released to customers and, and please realize that we don't release anything from November 1 to January 30th. So most of the product things you're seeing come from February 1 to, uh, to June 1st, right? So it's been a shorter window to make that happen. Um, we have a bunch of people using our encrypted uh, KVMs. Uh, we've, we've introduced a new portal with new APIs and have had great, great feedback on it. We still have some ways to go, but some great feedback on it and that seems to be are going really well. We introduced this new product, a new feature called Shared Flows. Lots of customers are using that as well because it's not just one developer, but it's multiple developers now that are that are involved with projects. So uh, the velocity of new features will obviously increase significantly over the next six months. As always, from a cloud perspective, you'll go into a moratorium uh, around November, November 15th, uh, and even on our OPDK product because most of our customers will want to stay there. But you're, you're going to see us do um, you're, gonna, you're, you're, gonna see a, you're gonna see the velocity of these features show up in a massive way. So what should you expect um, from Apogee Google this year? Um, if, you know, for those of you that have discussed with this before, for those of you that have not, I think if there was one word I want Apogee to be remembered by, uh, it would be execution, right? And I think that has not changed, right? We will continue to focus on, on making you successful as quickly as we possibly can. And we, we do understand that we can continue to improve on that because the faster you move, the more successful you are uh, thoughtfully, right? Not, not in a rash way, thoughtfully, the more successful Apogee will be. We will continue to lead and that is something that you know, we take very seriously. You think about us as a thought leader, think about where the future is going to go. Um, you, we've heard from a number of you that says, you know, the, the good thing about working with Apogee is you're thinking about where the puck is going to be, always. And that will continue, but never ever forget that it's about execution of projects that you have today, not, not where the puck is only going to be, but we'll bring that together. Um, and the last thing is we'll continue to expand uh, what we are trying to do. We are extremely successful in API management. Um, we're leaders by a distance. We help create the space. Um, I think you're going to see us expand that philosophy into adjacencies as we go forward uh, and bring and, and try to solve uh, more problems uh, for you so that you can go through your trans business transformations faster. So like I said earlier, we're very passionate about what we can do. There's a lot that we can talk about and I'm sure there'll be subsequent uh, times that we'll come back and talk about specific things. Uh, we are going to have a, a webcast on June 13th where we're going to talk more details about our roadmap. Please tune in. I'm sure you'll get an email. Uh, Helen and crew do a great job of reaching out to you. Um, and, and you can register for it where we'll talk a little bit about more details on what we've delivered as well as more importantly where we're heading.
So that's all I had. Um, we'll take some questions. What lasting impact do you see developer APIs having on how consumers and businesses consume? We think about, I, and I think about, I, great question by the way, uh, Andy from Equifax. Um, we think about APIs in broadly two buckets and there are nuances to both of these, but they are technology APIs and they are business APIs. I think technology APIs uh, are uh, things that enable um, developers to be more successful. You may have an OAuth API, um, you may have an ML API, things like that. And then you have business APIs, right? Um, you might have a Maps API or other APIs like that that are more business oriented. Uh, both of those, by the way, are curated for developers, just to be clear, because developers will land up using APIs on both. Uh, and they're curated for consumption by developers. But they both have very different impacts. One increases productivity, uh, then that productivity has an impact on business. The other one has a more direct impact on business right away. So that's the way we think about APIs, at least the way I think about APIs. And I think it will continue, both of those will have an impact on businesses as they go forward. There is some discussion in the industry, can we get to a point where, you know, the business analyst type and not developers, or people who are not as skilled can start using APIs. Um, absolutely, I think that is being discussed uh, in the uh, in the computing space in the in the computing world for a long time. Uh, but uh, I I don't see that. I think IFTT it makes a it definitely it tries to get there. You'll see us do some things there, but I think that will take a long time before it starts having a massive impact. Uh, but I definitely see us doing. Uh, doing, doing more on both business APIs and technology APIs. Uh, some other questions. Um, so, um, what can we expect from the product going forward? I think you should tune into June 13th. Uh, I think it'll be a, a, a great webcast where you can get into the details of what we're going to do. But in general, if I think about a high level themes, um, as I discussed earlier, I think you're going to see us do a lot more on intelligent. Um, on, on making the platform more intelligent across everything, whether it's monitoring, whether it's analytics, uh, whether it's caching, doing all kinds of things where we can bring ML uh, uh, practices across our product. Now, we've already done that, right? That, that's before uh, the Google acquisition. We did that with Sense. We've, uh, we've you know, applied everything that we learned from Insights One uh, into bot detection with our product Sense. And a lot of customers are very successfully using it and relying on it. But you're gonna see us do a lot with intelligence I think you're going to see us lot do, continue to do a lot with ease of use, right? We are going to continue to, um, to tweak the products to make it much easier to use. Our CSATs on our products are going really, really well. Um, CSAT is an NPI equivalent in the Google world, and, uh, but, uh, you know, but we're going to continue to, to learn from the way you, you use our product, a lot of data capture and things like that, a lot of user research, and continue to focus on ease of use. And the last thing I would tell you is we're going to spend a lot of time doing hybrid, right? And I, and I, and I put, um, uh, you're going to see us come up with gateways. You're going to, the, the, the main perspective here is how do we get our technology closer to where the API is so that we can make it more secure and do it, do it with lower latency. We will obviously continue focusing. We will continue to focus on, uh, on dial tone, which is make sure that, you know, we maintain four, five nines. Um, across whatever cloud we're in yeah, and, and provide that uh, level of service for anything that comes into our product and goes out of our product. Uh, and so all the things we've been doing, we're gonna continue doing, but you're gonna see us innovate a lot in those three buckets. Another question was, are you going to see more offerings in Apogee for ML? Can you share some examples? I just talked about that, um, right? We have, um, we've done things with Sense. You're gonna see us do, I think the two areas I would tell you is um, security and monitoring is two places where you'll see us do a lot more ML and you'll see us uh, come up with more things on the monitoring side first um, and we'll go from there. And so there's a, there's a lot happening on the ML side that's gonna show up in a product. When is Apogee gonna do an event in, uh, in Latin America uh, or in Sao Paulo? We should do one, it, we have some great customers, um, Magazine Luisa and a bunch of others and so we will uh, we'll absolutely do an event before the end of this year uh, in, uh, in, in, in Sao Paulo, probably, uh, uh, and, and make that happen. I, I think we have plenty of Apple Geeks that go down there, uh, and so I think going off and doing an event and getting everybody 
everybody together and hopefully figure, I'll try to figure out a way to visit as well. Next question, um, Apogee has a unique go-to-market. We talked about that a little bit. Your sales, um, your, your sales is both, um, is, is you know, focused on you know, strategic um, initiatives, you know, talking about people process as well as you, know, you talk a lot about the product. Do you plan to continue that approach? Um, and the answer is absolutely yes. Um, it is something that's worked really well for us. It used to be a big point of question from our customers because Google has a different sales model, uh, but um, GCP in general, uh, we are obviously going to continue with that. And in fact, we're working very closely with our colleagues to see how they can adopt some of our best practices going forward as well. So all of that is coming together well. Thank you um, very, very much for, uh, for tuning in. This has been phenomenal. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to talk to you about uh, Apogee and how things are going at Google. Uh, I'll end by saying um, we get up in the morning continuing to think only about one thing, which is how we can serve you uh, so that you can be successful faster. And that uh, has always been what we're about and it will continue to be what we're about. Thanks again. Take care.